High Peak Courses are a British government registered learning provider with the UK RLP. Hello, I'm Warren Lee. Welcome to High Peak Courses. Welcome to Structural Certification of Aircraft Interiors. If you are a graduate engineer struggling to find work in aerospace, there is a solution. It's knowledge. What I'm about to tell you will be important, as it will almost certainly make your CV attract the attention of a potential employer. Because your CV will stand out above the other CVs of recently qualified candidates. It will do so as a specialised type of engineer that is always wanted by the aircraft industry. And that's a stress engineer. More specifically, in this case, it is an aircraft interior structural certification engineer. It's a form of stress engineering. Aircraft interior structures usually consist of galleys, stowage units, flight crew rest compartments, FCRC, usually made from composite materials. This stress engineer will prepare and develop the finite element analysis and structural analysis models that will form part of the structural documentation of the aircraft interior parts. Patron and Nastram and FEMAP, or Nastram for Windows, FEA software, that's finite element software, is generally used. Hand calculations are used also, and they, they are prepared in Microsoft Excel and MathCAD. The aircraft industry starts paying these engineers from £33,000 per year to begin with, and rising to over £50,000 per year, depending on the experience. If you are on contract, then the rates of pay are usually about £40 per hour. That's £1,600 per week. Well, how do I know this? Well, it's because I work for two of the biggest interior aircraft designers and manufacturers in the world. Access to the industry is easier when you have niche knowledge. And it is this focused knowledge that I'm going to reveal to you because that will make you stand out and be recognised as a stress engineer. Stress certification engineers must produce stress analytical reports that validate the structural safety of aircraft interiors. And these are usually composite structures, such as stowage units. The aircraft interiors industry at present is valued at £20 billion worldwide. There are at least six major aircraft interior design and manufacturers, mainly located in the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Austria, Japan and the USA. There are frequent opportunities in the aircraft interiors industry for engineers with knowledge of producing the interface load report and the stress analysis report for storage units, galleys and FCRCs. We're going to look at a typical storage unit structure. We look at the materials, joints and fasteners, the storage unit loading techniques, the interface loads, the mass check procedure, the mass balance check procedure. These procedures are very important to convince the aircraft authorities that we have done our calculations correctly. We will look at finite element analysis, storage modelling in Patron, Nastran and in FEMA. There's also quality control of the FEA modelling. And finally, the structural report. So the student will obtain hands-on experience of constructing FEA models of the storage unit and will perform Nastran structural analysis to obtain the interface loads. Finally, the student will write the contents of a typical generic storage unit interface load certification report. Okay, let's start. Lecture one. The focus is on producing one of the aircraft composite interiors structural certification reports called the interface load report. The magnitude of the loads due to aircraft gust and maneuvers imparted to the aircraft structure at the stowage unit attachment points are known as the interface loads. These are the loads we need to calculate and produce and place in the certification report. Lecture one will introduce you to the environment of aircraft composite interiors, as it is important to obtain 
a mindset that is set on the world of aircraft composite interiors. So let's look at these aircraft on the apron. All these aircraft are having their galleys replenished with food and drink for your flight. The galleys can generally be found at the front and the rear of the aircraft. Let's get on board and settle into the flight. Viewing the scene below, which is impressive, but now let's take a look at the scene inside the aircraft. The interior items such as the floor, the window panelling, the overhead lockers, the rear galley, A small storage unit called a dog box. A typical standard storage unit, which is the type we are looking at for developing the interface loads in this report. All these items, all these monuments are made from glass fibre phenolic panelling, sometimes called fibre lamp. These composite interior products meet the fire, smoke and toxicity requirements, or FST. Aircraft interior monuments also include the flight crew rest compartments. These are used on long journeys by the crew, they like mini um, flats, apartments. And on the A380 can contain up to 12 little uh, crew rest compartments. So what we see here are the composite crew rest beds. You can see them here back in 1999. And these composite beds, they hold the world record for being the lightest weight uh, crew rest beds. Um, the previous weight was 19 kilograms. These ones I designed are 12 kilograms. Gallies. Working in the environment of aircraft interiors, you will be part of a design team that will include CAD designers and stress engineers. Some of these professionals will also be working on galleys and other aircraft interiors, which can also be called monuments. The interface loads and stress reports are also required for other monuments too. A rear galley on a single aisle Airbus A320.
The Airbus A330 is a much larger aircraft than the A320, and the A330 is a twin aisle aircraft. The galley on the A330 is also larger than the A320. All galleys contain equipment to warm the food, make tea and coffee, etc. And the weight of this equipment has to be taken into account when you do the interface load calculations. The storage unit also contains certain items whose weight needs to be considered when doing the interface load calculations for the storage unit. Now I'm going to show you a generic galley drawing. The galley contains shelving and partitions. In each of these small cubicles will sit the ovens, tea and coffee maker and other items that support the service of this galley as the aircraft's kitchen. The galley is fastened to the floor region of the aircraft structure by seven special floor fasteners. The upper part of the galley is fastened to the upper part of the fuselage structure by two upper fasteners. Food and drink trolleys are stowed in the lower part of the galley and are prevented from moving by latches seen here in red. This diagram indicates typical locations of galleys and stowage units. By now you should have an introductory understanding about aircraft composite interiors. The intention for this introduction section on aircraft interiors is so that when you do start to work in the environment, in the industry, you will feel familiar with this particular type of work. So now we go on to storage units. You can see the storage unit on the Airbus A330 is of different format to the one that we intend to produce the interface loads report for. Here is a selection of stowage units designed and made by different manufacturers. The type of stowage unit that we are going to produce the interface loads for is similar to that produced by AIM Aviation, who were previously known as Henshaws Limited. It's the one to the right of the photograph. There are a variety of aircraft composite interior manufacturing companies. Here is a list of some of the most popular ones, or well-known ones. AIM Aviation was known as Henshaws. They're based in Byfleet in Surrey in the United Kingdom. BE Aerospace was known as CF Taylors, based in Leighton Buzzard in the United Kingdom. Jamco of Japan. Contour Aerospace, who are now Zodiac based in the United Kingdom. Cell Interiors, they're based in Germany or Austria. Zodiac are based in France. Storage units can contain first aid kits, portable oxygen cylinders, protective breathing equipment, folding tables, 
literature pockets, LCD monitors, baby bassinets, folding trolleys, wheelchairs, curtain rail attachments, folding shelves, a coat rail, a magazine wrap, or floor stowage. In the analysis we are going to do of the stowage unit, our stowage unit will contain a coat rail, magazine racks, and floor stowage. Here is a typical first aid kit for aviation use. The fabrication of aircraft interiors includes stowage units are assembled from a structural glass fibre with a phenolic resin and honeycomb core composite sandwich panel called Fiberlam. This is made by a company called Hexel. The company first started out in the south of Great Britain in the 1940s and is now well known worldwide. The image here is a generic shelving unit courtesy of Hexel. The construction is very similar to that of a galley. Photos of various fibre lamp products and typical honeycomb core. The honeycomb core is bonded between opposing skins of glass fibre. The W and L directions of the cell structure offer different material properties but I will tell you what is done in industry with these dissimilar properties. In particular, when you are constructing the finite element model. When fixing the fiber lamp panels together, they can be bonded into shaped metal extrusions Note that when the finite element model is built, then these extrusions should be included in the model because the metal edgings offer stiffness. This is a typical CAD design section of fiber on panel details. I will provide you with a good reference in design calculations for fibre lamp construction variations a little later. Fibre lamp panels are fastened together with threaded metal inserts. The metal inserts are bonded into the fibre lamp by recognised procedures. These metal inserts have a stiffness that is sometimes necessary to be entered into the finite element model. In particular, this is necessary when modelling satellites for vibrational analysis. When a CAD designer completes a drawing of a stowage unit or other aircraft composite interior, such as a galley, he will include details as shown above, such as a cross section and dimensional details. He will put on the drawings enough detail and information that is necessary for his design to be analysed and fabricated. Currently, the two main CAD packages for the design of aircraft composite interiors are SolidWorks and Katir 5. However, Siemens CAD software is also making inroads into this industry. Student task. Before going on to the storage unit, I want to ensure that this course 
not only gives you focus knowledge on making the interface loads document, that is the report, but gives you a wider understanding of aircraft composite interiors. This is not only to enhance your understanding and experience of aircraft composite interiors, but to strengthen your position when applying for work in this field, to strengthen your CV so that it is noticed. So we start with a student task. It's simple but fundamental. So when you're working in the aircraft interiors industry, this knowledge and the terminology of aircraft interiors, you will be able to converse with CAD designers about the structures that they are working on. So select either of the CAD packages of SOLIDWORKS or CATIA 5 for this task. Study the layout of this generic galley. Note the dimensions I have given. Scale off the other dimensions, i.e. locations of the floor fixing positions from the diagrams already given in this lecture. And scale off the positions of the shelves and of the legs and of the other details. This is sufficient. And draw a galley in 3D CAD. This will be three-dimensional. Each panel will have a thickness and the joints, the extrusions that we've discussed, they'll be included. I will give you more information when we have a face-to-face. -face. Use three-quarter inch fibre lamp and half inch fibre lamp. The shelves draw in half inch fibre lamp. The rest of the structure, the sides, and the top of the structure in three quarter inch fibre lamp. When you've done your 3D drawing in SOLIDWORKS or CATIA 5, then produce a 2D drawing. There are methods where you can actually drag and drop the 3D and it will produce a 2D drawing. Now, these 2D drawings are used on the shop floor to fabricate the, the galley unit or the stowage unit or the flight crew rest compartment. Detail and label a drawing with information and sections and with your name and your date. This will go towards your portfolio, which you will show a future employer. Now, part of the student task, you will be required to study galleys and methods of fixing the fibre lamp panels from your searches on the internet. The work you do should produce a 3D CAD model like this generic galley, which shows the thicknesses of the panels. Associated with this lecture one, I will email to you an essential design document. In the next lecture, we will start on the work to begin the construction of the stowage unit.